Okay, so let me get the Baldomero Toledo stuff out of the way. Uh, one insight that I had uh, while watching the game yesterday, uh, it's Tim here by the way, it's uh, Monday morning, it's a view from the South Stands and I'm coming to you after TFC's controversial loss yesterday evening uh, at the hands of Sporting Kansas City and dare I say at the hands of one Mr. Baldomero Toledo. Uh, two insights about Toledo. One, he looks like a Latin Richard Nixon. And I had photos at the beginning uh, of this uh, little video broadcast to uh, prove my point. He looks like a Latin Richard Nixon. It's like if Desi Arnaz and Richard Nixon mixed their DNA, that's what you ended up with. And uh, just like uh, Nixon, uh, Toledo likes to be the story. That's 24 times, ladies and gentlemen, that Toronto FC has now seen uh, Baltimore Toledo as an official of uh, four more than any other uh, official. I think I think Silvio Petrescu, the Canadian uh, ref, uh, we've had about 20 times. Uh, we've never won a road game, ever, ever, when Toledo was official, uh, officiated, I should say. Uh, I think 24 times is enough. I think we've uh, served whatever uh, uh, penance we need to serve. Uh, let's give them to somebody else. Let's give them to Montreal. Let Montreal have them. Let Vancouver have them. Let Columbus have them. I don't want to see him anymore this season. We've done enough when it comes to Mr. Toledo. Now, I want to keep this uh, video short and sweet today because I really only have one significant point to make other than Toledo. And, of course, if you didn't watch the game, you probably have uh, heard by now uh, the Reds lost 1-0 on a goal by Brad Davis. Davis is in the top right-hand corner of the box. Uh, shoves and uh, elbows slash strong arms Justin Morrow to the ground loops back in and puts a goal past Clint Irwin a goal, a goal maybe Irwin might like to get back uh, but that led to uh, TFC essentially losing a point a precious point on the road Toledo got the call absolutely wrong uh, and uh, of course that's uh, one uh, of many times uh, that he's been the story and, and, and that's my knock on him as a referee not that he doesn't understand the game not that he makes good calls or bad calls, but I really believe that I think in his heart of hearts he likes, just like Richard Nixon, he likes uh, being the story. Now I want to get to my uh, primary point in the, this little video screen today, and that's about what I want to call maybe the maturation of Greg, uh, of Greg Vanny. Going into this season, uh, I think it's fair to say that the major the major concern I think that myself and, and a lot of TFC observers uh, have with this team is not uh, uh, you know the players on the pitch but it's the manager on the sidelines uh, and Mr. Vanny didn't cover himself with a lot of glory particularly at the end of the 2015 campaign uh, uh, tactically where he completely got it wrong against the Montreal Impact particularly in the playoffs three days after playing them uh, unsuccessfully of course uh, to end the 2015 campaign. Now, you could say it might be the players that he had, it could be injuries, it could be any number of things. I don't kind of I don't kind of agree with that. I just don't I don't think that Greg Vanny uh, either trusted himself or, or or felt confident enough in his ability to make some tough tactical decisions uh, or as many tough tactical decisions maybe as he could have or should have uh, in 2015 and, and before. But what I like about what I've seen so far in the three games uh, is number one, the Reds have had a chance to win all three of them. They've won one, they've drawn one, they lost one of course, but they've had a chance to win all three. They haven't been blown out of any games. Uh, they've scored more goals than they've uh, let in on the road, which is always a recipe for at least some success. Uh, they've scored four, they've only uh, let in three goals in three games. Uh, which in a very high scoring Major League Soccer campaign, at least so far, where you're seeing games like 4-3 and 5-0 and, uh, and things like that, uh, uh, that's a really encouraging sign. But what I specifically liked about what I've seen so far is take a look back, ladies and gentlemen, at the three games in particular. Take a look at Red Bull, take a look at New York City FC, and take a look at Kansas City. What did he do at Red Bull? Uh, he uh, let the Red Bulls have the ball. The Red Bulls are a counter-attacking team. Uh, he let them have the ball. He didn't uh, uh, let any TFC player get themselves out of position significantly enough to allow the counter to work. What did he do against New York City FC? Uh, Vieira comes out with uh, six players in a very 
uh, uh, congested, very narrow midfield. What does he do? He adjusts at the second half, brings on some different players, and, and, and sets up a different uh, sort of a, sort of an approach. Uh, and we steal a precious point in New York City. Uh, what does he do yesterday against Kansas City? Uh, he plays possession soccer. Uh, the Reds, I think, ended at almost 48% possession, which by any standards is a very credible number uh, on the road if you're uh, not a Barcelona who gets 70% wherever they play. Uh, but of course, we're not talking uh, Barcelona here, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking Toronto FC and Major League Soccer. But the point I'm trying to get across is that each of those three games, New York, Kansas City, NYC FC, well, not in that order, New York, New York and KC is a better way to say it. Uh, keep it, keep it, uh, you know, keep it in order. Every one of those games uh, saw TFC use a different tactic and a different approach. Horses for courses, uh, managing to the opposition, uh, doing whatever, uh, uh, however you want to call it. Uh, I call it a tactical maturity that I haven't seen from Greg Vanny previously. And uh, other than, of course, the uh, the the uh, the hope that we finally, finally have some defensive solidity to build upon, my true hope right now is that going into the 2016 campaign, we actually have a manager uh, who's uh, able to take advantage of all of the tactical options he's got available to him now, either in the starting eleven or on the uh, on the substitutes bench. So I'm liking what I'm seeing. Uh, so far from Mr. Vanny, I like what I'm seeing so far from TFC. Uh, we've got a break of a week. The Reds don't play for, what, 13 days. They play on April 2nd uh, in Colorado, our first Saturday game of the year, which is going to be weird, getting used to all these Sunday games now. Uh, uh, Moore and uh, Irwin going home. I think that's a real good opportunity to get three points for the Reds and get back on track uh, on this road trip and uh, get closer to our, our 10 or 11 point goal. And, of course, we've got some players going away on international duty. I'm not sure if Stephen Betashore is going to be away with Iran, but I do know, of course, uh, that Will Johnson, uh, a recently returned uh, Josie Altidore, and Michael Bradley are going to be away with the Canadian and American teams, respectively. Let's hope that, since I don't give a rat's ass about the American national soccer team, let's just hope that Bradley and Altidore don't get hurt. Let's hope that Will Johnson comes back with uh, one, maybe two famous scalps uh, against uh, El Tree. So I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful uh, Easter holiday. Uh, and uh, I want to dedicate this, uh, uh, this episode to my mom, uh, who recently passed away uh, after a very long uh, and courageous fight with cancer. Mom, I love you very much. Miss you terribly. And I want to dedicate this uh, episode to you uh, and your memory. Thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a great week. And uh, we'll talk to you after the Colorado game in a couple of weeks. Thank you for watching.